For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. This is part of our May Day series on the issues faced by workers around the world. We are going to be talking to trade union representatives from various countries on how workers are faring, especially in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. What are the challenges in front of trade unions as far as organizing is concerned? Today, we have with us Patrick Correa of the International Department of the CGT Metal Workers Union in France. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, President, for invitation. Hello, everyone. Yes. So I just first wanted to ask, could you talk a bit about the COVID-19 situation in France and especially the impact on the workers? Because we do know that France is one of the most affected countries. There have been over 24,000 people have died. The number of cases has been huge. So could you talk about how especially the working class is suffering at this point? Okay, this is a quite difficult situation we're facing now, actually in France. I think it's the same thing around the world. Um, we know the, the pandemic has been very strong in the country and we take measures now for uh, been two months ago by locking down uh, all the country, you know, and uh, sending uh, all the workers back at home, uh, uh, especially teleworking, but uh, in some essential areas like in, uh, in supermarkets, food industries or uh, health and safety, but it is normal. We may have to stay at work. So um, at the moment, uh, we are still locked down and all these essential workers in the public service, in transport, health and so on, they are still working and taking care of us. And they are this, the more precarious, the more, I would say, poorer, poorer uh, workers actually are taking care of all the other population. And I think that we have, must give them our recognition at the moment. And I think the society and the employers and the government have to give them our recognition about the fact that they are essential to this country and essential to all the people's lives. So at the moment, we are the government has announced that the lock, locking down should be over in two weeks now. But actually, we don't know if the uh, the health situation will be more more, more quiet. Uh, we don't know if we will have a good conditions to go back to work. Actually, the, I mean, what we want to do, the government, is to force the the labor class to force the workers to go back to work because what we are worried about is not it's about the economy. It's not about the health uh, of the population, about the workers. So we are trying to force us to go back to work. And many companies have already started uh, working again uh, since uh, now two weeks. So um, they, they, have, they, have, they have announced that they will reopen the school, not for education purpose, but just because the school will take care uh, of our kids and then the parents will be able to go back to work. Right. But actually, we know that we, 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 are, we, are, we, are not, we are not able to, to provide um, aid and safety to the workers. We don't have masks, we don't have gels, we don't have clothes, we cannot respect the distance between the, people, between the workers. Mm -hmm. So we say we cannot reopen at the moment. That's not possible. Right. And uh, also, with regards to the reopening strategy itself, one of the things you were talking about is the impact of the impact on essential service workers. So could you talk a bit more about them? What is the situation, especially in the informal sector right now? We, do, we don't have many informal sector, actually, but we have many uh, in the food industry, mm -hmm. in the transport, uh, you know, like in the, in the deliveries, you know, uh, post office and so on. We have many, many precarious workers. Right. I know they have received uh, they have uh, bad working conditions. They have uh, what they receive only minimum wage here in France. But these workers actually are essential because uh, without them, we'll not be able to get food. We'll not be able to get deliveries. we will not many things we cannot get. Right. And the fact that show this crisis is that the blue collar workers are the essential part of our, our economy, are essential part of the uh, of of the life of all the citizens. Right. And uh, that's what is, is what shows really important to to us is that we need so with this crisis is to get rid of precarious work, get rid of of the, of the minimum work, uh, contract that gives only uh, uh, not different wages to the to to the person. So that's what shows this uh, this crisis. And there is an inequality. This crisis shows a, a huge inequality between work, workers because the, the white collar workers are actually teleworking from home. Right, exactly. They are, they are, they are safe. Right. They are home, and, and that's normal. But the blue worker, the blue collar workers, are forced to go back to work, and they are worried every day 
about going to work because they maybe they will we will be get, get ill, we will get we will go to hospital and be, uh, even die. So, but but this is the inequality of 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 of, of the situation. You can see that also in in uh, when you go look at the kids that are going at uh, 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 going to school. You know, the kids the kids the kids from the white collar workers are actually home. They have a laptop and they work from home and uh, and they study. But the, the, the kids from blue collar worker, the more precarious one, at, at home, that they have no laptop, they cannot get the education. So this is the reality of the, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of this crisis. They are not meaning. Some areas of France actually, they, they are they are uh, they have lost their job. They are, don't have food to eat because m one part of the kids are in these areas when they went to school. That's the only place where you could get get one one meal per day. Right. Actually, they don't get this meal. This this, this is the cre the crisis only shows the inequalities that capitalism has created in our countries and uh, all across the world. Exactly. And could you talk a bit about how uh, the economic policies, especially of the Macron government in recent years, have heightened some of these inequalities? Well. The, yes, but I think that uh, what was said is uh, Warren Buffett that told a few years ago that the, uh, the dominant class was war was uh, win was wi winning the uh, the uh, the class struggle against the, the working class, and I think that uh, Macron is is is, uh, is uh, at the end of uh, actually of capitalism at the end uh, in this policy. Mm -hmm. What he has been only doing is try to increase the inequalities, only the money going back in the, going back in the uh, in the pocket of the uh, of a more rich of a of a more, uh, of a rich uh, rich person of his country and around the world. What he has been doing is only taking money from the uh, from the workers to get them to get it to the capital. You know when he 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 uh, he's trying to um, to. Uh, to, uh, sorry, when he was trying to cut the pension, exactly. it's not for to get a system more, uh, I would say, sustainable. It's not only the fact that he wants to give the money of, on the pension to the capital, to the uh, to, uh, to uh, pension fund. That's the only thing he was uh, was thinking of. Right. Uh, so that that's it. That's always the same policy where, where around the world, and it, when he make he make all the contracts more precarious. It's not about the fact that they will get uh, a, a more uh, more easily a job. No, it's because of the fact that they like this. The, 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 the employer can put more pressure on the worker and even work, get, earn more money. Exactly. That's the only thing we're interesting at exactly. the moment. So it's only the same. We have all, all, always the same policies, even when the. Uh, when the president of the government are changes, it's always the same policy. Right. And you mentioned the pension reform. So uh, just last year saw, last year and the beginning of this year saw massive protests across France on this issue over, over the fact that the age of retirement would be raised, over the fact that it would be a points-based system which would be graded based on very vague criteria. So could you tell us a bit about what the situation currently is with the protests? Not, of course, the protests now, but before the lockdown, what was the situation with the protests, and uh, because it was a countrywide thing, so what was the government forced to concede? Well, um, just up to, before the uh, we were locked down, I can say that the very that the government was under pressure. Uh, the the massive struggles we have organized, also the support we, we, we that the citizens who are shown us during this all these months of protest was huge, and still increasing. That's just uh, incredible that. Uh, more than uh, uh, 61% of the population was supporting CGT's action actually during all those time. And it, you know that when you, when you have a huge struggle, you know, normally the support is going down, right. you know. But I, I actually it's not the case during this uh, the pension reform. We had huge strikes in the transport in many areas, but they are still supporting us. We actually, before even the, uh, the crisis started, the, the only idea of the government was try to force the vote on the pension reform, exactly. and that's what they did. That's what they did, and they were using this uh, crisis to force the vote on the on the pension. But they are so worried about the fact that the I would say the uh, the the the, um, uh, the unhappiness and the uh, we could also start again about protesting a lot. That now the pension reform has been frozen. Okay, right. Okay. That's a good it's been frozen, and even uh, we have now some um, 
significant uh, messages from the government that will they will drop it. Oh, okay, good to know. So, uh, but but in that aspect, I think it shows when we we working class is acting, is protesting, even if it's long, even if it costs a lot. At the end, we can have a result, and this we and this process has been, I think, uh, uh, a huge success. Exactly right. And uh, to come back to the COVID-19 aspect, could you talk a bit about the sort of solidarity actions that workers, workers' unions, workers' organizations have been conducting in France to basically help their fellow comrades at this time of need? Well, uh, uh, solidarity is uh, really important at the moment. That's true. But uh, the, uh, I think the main concerns about the fact that uh, we, the solidarity is to 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 provide at the, at the moment all the uh, I would say um, basic needs that our members have to to get when they go to work uh, masks uh, gel uh, you know gloves and so our our protest is to give them what we should have and also our support during the, this crisis right. so um, there's our solidarity is also between I would say uh, the workers and among themselves. Actually, during this crisis, and what's shown this crisis is that actually, even we, if we are locked down, in uh, we are separated from all of our, I would say, our comrades. We have never been to work, so talking so much. Actually, uh, we talk. Uh, we uh, we use the new ways of communication, like we are using today, to communicate a lot and exchange a lot. So, uh, and we have never been such a good, I would say, communication and uh, exchange of information. Uh, between uh, among our workers actually, and this is between even between uh, workers that have never talked to each other from different companies from different sectors. That that's the kind of solidarity we act in actually. We have a solidarity we show is also about the protect the the, the migrants that have come to to France. We are trying to get I would say uh, measures to protect them. Uh, they are because they are lost in this situation. Right. We are trying to protect the, the persons that are actually in the streets. We've, uh, we are confronting the COVID-19. We are trying to provide food in some areas where they don't get food because they are, they don't have no money or not access to, to supermarkets. We're trying to do everything we can at the local level to, to help them at the national level to organize what should be the role of state to, to fulfill the basic needs of all the citizens and population of this country. Right. And finally, it's a larger question. So one of the key challenges, both right now and in the coming months for trade unions will be on organizing itself. So, uh, you know, how do you organize at a time when people are maybe a bit more scared to come out in rallies and big processions and marches? Uh, how do you do meetings? So what are the kind of ideas that uh, you in the CGT have been thinking about regarding how to engage workers both right now and in the immediate Months. Well, um, you, actually, we're talking about May Day. May Day is an important day for all the working class around the world, and uh, especially here in France, it's a really important day for us as union. We do the first time ever that we are not be able to rally exactly. in the streets of Paris. So, uh, but it's, uh, we have no, we are in, in the history that's the first time ever. So, um, you see, this is just crazy. So, we have to find new ways of, of protesting, acting. And uh, we so we have been very very active in the uh, by, by the communication networks. We are using uh, Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, all the different systems to communicate. And now tomorrow, I say uh, all our members are encouraged to put leaflets leaflets in in front of their uh, flats, homes to protest mm -hmm. and about the actual situation. The, uh, our health. Is, uh, is is more important than their money. Right. So well, that's, that's the main message we want to to address to the, our politics and the employers and capital at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, what shows this? Uh, what I told you is that this um, this uh, crisis shows that we have the capacity to even be more efficient. We have tools, but we are not using them. We have not been using them properly, and now we are using them. And we can see we can be even more efficient than capital itself when you're using them correctly. Right. So, I'm 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 looking I'm looking after the international issues in the uh, in Metal Workers Federation. I've never been so in contact with all my comrades around the world and especially in Europe. We have exchanges every day by by uh, by Skype, 
on uh, the situation in different companies and the situation of the countries, what are their what are their problems, how can we can help them. So we have never been talking so much. I think that's the way to to deal about internationalism. It's about a way to also to build, I would say, an inter international uh, uh, struggle against the capital is by communicating, and we are not being communicating enough. And you're talking about organizing. That's a key problem at the moment. When we don't have, uh, where worker is not working, this is, this is uh, difficult. So we have been trying to organize many meetings as we can. We are providing many information that we can mm -hmm. because the, telework, the workers are actually teleworking. They have no information uh, from their companies. We are right. trying to send them any information they can get. All the uh, advices we can, we can deliver them, we are trying to do so. And in the companies, well, uh, even when they are co uh, the companies where we are working, the, our delegates are there. They are, they are, we are, they are with the worker, you know. They are, uh, are just cl close to the workers every day. So uh, some, uh, many of our delegates actually in hospital because they have been working with our with our members. That we don't care because we have to do so. That's our duty to to be close to them. Uh, and uh, help them every day. That's a way of organizing too. And I, the capital, that we are trying to do is to use these health, uh, health measures from the government, you know, the lockdown, to, to, uh, to forbid them the access to the companies. Right. We have been to tribunal, to, to, uh, to the courts, and uh, the court said we, the CGT has been banned from many companies because they said we cannot go into the company because of, our, because of health issues. Right. The court could recognize the fact that our, our delegates our members have a right to go in inside the company. So what we are trying to do, and we have a duty when we are in the companies, is to to make the, to, to to condemn, to go to court, to tell them you don't respect the health and safety measures. Right. Thank you so much, Patrick, for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you, Prasant. Take care.